Elemental 3 is a game I released to the public on August 11th, 2016, over four years ago. The idea, which was heavily inspired by the popular iOS app Doodle God, is that you start with the four basic elements of air, earth, fire, and water, and combine pairs of them to create new elements, and combine pairs of those new elements to create even more elements. To make my game unique though, I spent a good week coding in a crowdsourcing feature. Basically, all element recipes were devised and voted on by the general user base, and they got added into the official game only once they got enough voter approval. No recipes were hard-coded by me, the creator. Even though the game was initially released to overwhelmingly negative reviews, I thought it was really fun to see the new recipes trickle in hour after hour. Using this wisdom of the crowds can help us create really fascinating datasets, which I used to create these data visualizations. Pause the video if you want to inspect them further, because I just think they're jam-packed with interesting patterns. Anyway, anybody who's ever worked with collaborative multiplayer games knows that it can be a giant mess of clients talking to servers, talking back to clients, in unreliable, hacked-together ways. Well, I coded Elemental 3 really badly, breaking a bunch of fundamental networking principles, such as requiring users to do busy waiting for news updates of new elements. All this led to our hosting service being forced to shut down our entire website, h1s.net, in 2018, likely due to the millions of unnecessary GET requests from idle Elemental 3 players. Since I didn't want the entire ship to sink because of one small leak, I decided to discontinue Elemental 3 forever so that everything else on our site could live. Unfortunately, I just don't have the skills, resources, or time to fix the situation. So I'd like this game to just rest peacefully in the archive of h1s.net history. Unless somebody with more skills, more resources, and more time than me can come along to save it. But in the meantime, I'd like to use this video to tell the story of how new elements were forged throughout the history of Elemental 3, by using a three-dimensional family tree structure. I don't think this type of data visualization has ever been done before, so you just have to watch to see what I mean. Let's roll the clip. On the afternoon of August 9th, this universe of elements was first unveiled to my Discord server, where fewer than 100 people were active. This early batch of pioneers was fearless, spawning ideas and casting votes with vigor but their collective numbers were just not enough for the universe to accept their pleas. But then, after 90 whole agonizing minutes of radio silence, the cosmos listened to their cries and brought forth two twin offspring nearly simultaneously. Water plus water equals pond, and air plus earth equals dust. These youngsters weren't alone for long, for the eager artisans of the online realm gracefully crafted three new cousins. Earth plus water equals mud, air plus air equals wind, and fire plus water equals energy, the primordial purple element. From here, we onlookers could gaze upon this blossoming garden and deduce how it works. For each crafting recipe, metal rods burst forth vertically from the tops of the parent elements. The rods turn 90 degrees, then travel horizontally to meet in the middle. The child element is born directly above this fusion. And as you can guess, a self-doubling recipe, like wind plus wind equals windstorm, is just a single pillar upwards. Also, altitude corresponds exactly with the time that elements are born. Now, we all know the internet is for introverts, and introverts are often night owls. So as 8pm hit and the United States was plunged into nighttime, a flurry of new creations arrived. Rain, swamps, ash, and most importantly, electricity. We also began to see the emergence of element families. We already knew that water and water forms a pond, but we were just now learning that you could combine water with its grandchild lake to form the river. Since this aquatic family of elements was derived only from water, it appears as a completely vertical blue pillar in the lower left. Then, around 9pm, user Bazinga9000 started the Sky or Bust campaign, 
convincing enough users to vote that air and cloud combine to make sky. This campaign was bittersweet, because while successful, the color of sky came out as dark blue rather than sky blue. Anyway, remember energy, that primordial purple element? People found mischievous ways to use energy to create an energy drink, the first man-made product, and cell life, the first appearance of any living organism anywhere in this previously cold, uninhabited world. The crafting recipes that led to these monumental breakthroughs, like energy plus lake equals cell life, were debatable. But in the long run, it enabled us to reach this much richer, livelier, more stimulating version of the universe, so we gotta be grateful. Next, seemingly by coincidence, there was a mad dash to fit new elements in right as the first midnight struck. As Tuesday transformed into Wednesday, we jumped from 40 elements to 45. Many of these new ones expanded on the theme of life, with evolution and multicellular organisms joining the arena. But with a thriving community willing to steer the ship, and no bugs in dire need of fixing, I decided it was safe for me to go to sleep for the night. So for 8 hours, I dreamed. I know I was technically sleeping by this point, but I just have to let you guys know that Swamp plus Swamp equals Shrek has been created. He's element number 86, which means that, according to my audience, Shrek is one of the 100 most fundamental substances in the universe. Maybe that makes Shrek analogous to the real-life element 86 of Radon, you know, because they're both noble? As the eastern coast of the US was waking up to Wednesday morning, element production started ramping up. Hell plus Hell had birthed the whole family of the North Koreas, including Norther Korea and Northeast Korea. Similarly, the water family has extended to oceans, aquatic planets, aquatic solar systems, aquatic galaxies, and aquatic universes, which I don't think actually exist in the real world. But then, at 9.30 AM, I was born. Element number 222, labeled Carry, can be crafted by combining <laughs> wisdom and infinity. I have to say, you players are too kind. Uh-oh, they decided my brother Michael is Carry plus Carry. That doesn't make any sense. Also, here's a handy tip. The metal rod extrusion process takes the same amount of time for all new elements. So that means if you see metal rods shooting up very quickly, that new crafting recipe must be using elements from very far down, meaning they're very old, such as the primordial wind plus mud, which took a surprisingly long time to decide on. On the other hand, if the metal rods are slowly growing upwards, that means the crafting recipe is using relatively newer elements. Next, at 3.20pm, I had to do some boring server maintenance stuff right here. That right there was nearly 30 minutes of no new elements. Okay, I want to point out this pillar of green elements in the middle of the screen that's made of the Dur plant family. I should remind you that this game was released in 2016, and that's when the YouTube channel I Hate Everything made a video ranting about how memes like Damn Daniel had become so brain dead. To demonstrate the stupidity of memes, IAT made his own fake meme of him pointing to a house plant and saying Dur plant. The next historical moment is approaching. You should know that wood chipper plus wood chipper equals two of them IDK lol. Now pay attention to the crafting recipe number 506, which states that two of them IDK lol plus two of them IDK lol equals numbers. This element, called numbers, would become the birthplace of all elemental three mathematics. As you'll soon see, numbers plus numbers equals one the 587th element. And from there, combining a sufficient number of ones can get you to any whole number you want, except zero. Look on the left, it's the white element, it's time to stop. The initial way to create it was by combining the air slash windstorm slash typhoon family ad nauseum. Once you get to Omni Typhooniverse plus Omni Typhooniverse, the resulting child is not another level of Typhooniverse, but it's time to stop. This element, perhaps inspired by Filthy Frank, went on to become the second most producible element, 
meaning at least 41 equations combined a pair of probably nonsensical elements to produce it's time to stop. So in that regard, it's time to stop showed up everywhere and was second only to death at 107 equations. The second day was drawing to a close, and while creative ideas like Cosmo plus Wanda equals Poof from the Fairly Odd Parents were still being submitted, the pace of element creation was slowing to a crawl once again. That's when I came up with the idea of a section for the game called Up and Coming, that would showcase crafting recipe ideas that were sitting in limbo between approval and deletion, but were closer than 50% the way to approval. These ideas were probably acceptable, so the Up and Coming tab was just a way to fast track them into official status. As an added bonus, players who clicked the Up and Coming button had a higher chance of casting that final vote which would allow them to be the first person to officially own that element. It would also give them the privilege of typing what I called a pioneer's mark, which is a short text message they can write for all future players to see if they craft the element too. It was a win-win for everyone. And so as I released the up-and-coming feature online at around midnight before Thursday, the rate of element creation skyrocketed to over 100 an hour. I was blown away, but this new wave of up-and-coming elements could only continue if there was a reservoir to feed it. And and by 3am, that reservoir was dry. Okay, here's a concept related to both this game and graph theory. So, as you've seen with the it's time to stop element, multiple equations can lead to the same element product. That means the number of elements is not always the same as the number of equations. In fact, early on in this experiment, I was still hoping that the voting public would start recommending more and more redundant equations as time went on. Stuff like mud plus water equals swamp, mud plus pond equals swamp, and mud plus lake equals swamp, which are all true. If the users kept doing that, and if the number of equations, which are like edges in a graph, could ever reach n times n minus 1 all over 2, where n is the number of elements, then we could essentially finish our game, where every equation leads back to a pre-existing element. But that never even got close to happening. As of the Elemental 3 shutdown in 2018, the final count of equations, 53,032, still sat at less than double the final count of elements, 27,225. That means the majority of equations still lead to more elements, which are sparsely connected nodes that haven't made friends with the whole graph yet. But that psychologically makes sense, because for players, it's always more fun to introduce a new element to the environment than to circle back to a pre-existing one somebody else had created. Here's two other interesting patterns I want to point out. First pattern, do you see how empty the left side of the screen looks right now? Well that region is directly above air's corner of the base, which coincides with the fact that air is the least useful element of the original four. When players are trying to concoct something funky, there's just not much you can do with this airy substance that we usually call nothing. So I'm not surprised that there are so few late stage elements that are derived mostly from air. Second pattern. Around 10am on the third day, which is quite a few hours ago, I decided to raise the vote threshold that's required for a crafting recipe idea to become officially in the game. I raised it by 33%. Why did I do this? Well, I can't actually remember. But that change led to a dry spell at that time, because recipe ideas that were very close to the threshold were suddenly set quite far back, and it took them a couple hours or so to make up that lost ground and finally cross the finish line. Now, the crazy thing to remember is that, at this point, my game, Elemental 3, was technically still not released to the public. I had still only shared it on my Discord server, so sometime in the evening of August 11th, I finally finished editing my Carry KH video called Make Your Own Elements in Elemental 3, and uploaded it to my then 30,000 subscribers. I thought this could bring in a much larger surge of new players, but that didn't actually happen. It turns out that my more devoted fans who'd been willing to try out my new game were the same type of fans who would have already joined my Discord server. So as Thursday drew to a close, there was a moderately sized spike in activity, but it wasn't that game changing and it wasn't even as large as the up and coming surge from earlier. I'm gonna put the elements and equations datasets, which are in the form of raw JSON files, in a Google Drive folder that I'll link in the description. I'll also include some of the cool graphs and charts I showed at the beginning of the video. This means that if you're a data scientist, or mathematician, or artist, 
and you know of cooler ways to play with Elemental 3's datasets, go wild! It might be interesting to draw overarching trends in how the nodes and edges connect to each other in ways that even I haven't discovered yet. By the way, the datasets were originally SQL databases, but I exported them to JSON files so I could upload them more easily. Just keep that in mind. Also, this whole visualization was made with Processing 3.3, which is just Java with a bunch of graphics libraries. I'll upload that processing code online too, but it's not very user-friendly, so I doubt anyone will find it useful. Okay, now we're watching the same animation, but played 10 times faster. That's my way of saying to you viewers that this video is pretty much over. Now it's just me rambling, mwahaha. Anyway, I also want to say this, there's a handful of people and companies who have asked me if I want to work with them on some mobile app or video game or something, and there were times that I would suggest a revamped version of Elemental 3. The thing is, a lot of outsiders would look at this game and ask, what's the point? What is the objective? There's no storyline. So it usually got turned down. In my opinion, Elemental 3 is not quite the same genre as most games with a plotline, and it's not even the same genre as a lot of sandbox games like Minecraft. I think the appeal comes from players having the power to alter the game itself, by recommending and voting ideas that you'll actually see manifest in the actual game. Some players also told me they enjoyed acquiring a complete set of all the elements. For example, if 149 elements had been created, they would try to have 149 elements in their personal inventory. But that feat got a lot harder as the number of elements started climbing by hundreds each night, though. So in conclusion, maybe Elemental 3 is in a different game genre to itself. What I see is that there's at least 20 different mini-audiences I've accrued, some of which are super awesome and supportive. I'm talking about you guys who get creative and play along with my computer science projects with me. I'm really grateful you guys have stuck around through every stupid hiatus I've done. But there's also some of these mini-audiences which can get bitterly impatient that I've betrayed them for working on a different project than the one that they were demanding I give them instead, and I just don't think I can split myself up that many ways. I have to say, yeah, I've gone more multiple years without even touching some of these, but mathematically that's unavoidable. So, final question, is Elemental 4 going to happen? Well, it could, if and only if there's outside assistance willing to help me. But given how structureless and atypical the game is, there's a good chance that never happens, which is fine, because every company and every person already has a full plate of projects, stressors, life circumstances, and unexpected emergencies to keep themselves busy. I totally accept the fact that nobody's really there to swoop down and finish my half-baked projects for me. The conclusion is that Elemental 3 or 4 might never get an update, it might never even come back online, and if that's the case, we should just let it rest peacefully, okay? I feel like that's how we treat most movies we've watched a decade ago. They were entertainment we enjoyed, and we can move on, just glad we had the experience. Besides, I've got other cool projects I want to give a try. Okay, this ramble has been going on for way too long, so if you're still watching, thanks for making it this far, and I will see you in my next video.